My name is Damien Brady, and I'm going to be talking today about delivering change to the cloud. So once again, a little refresher, Tailwind Traders is a hardware supply company. Uh, they sell a whole lot of different things. Um, and then uh, what we've talked about so far is, you know, as we've gone through this journey with DevOps is they've improved their collaboration. They've got continuous integration even. They're, they're looking at their code quality and making sure that what they actually build is, a good, is of good quality. But what they haven't done is actually delivered anything to production in a nice way. So we, let's look at this definition of DevOps that we keep talking about as well, which is the union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value to our end users. And so we've looked at some of the people, process, and products issues, especially the people and process. And then we've touched on GitHub Actions and a few other tools like VS Code and Code Spaces and all sorts of stuff like that but we haven't really touched on the delivering value to our end users part. And that is really the most important part. While this stuff works really well on our local machines, you know, you really want this to be in the hands of customers. Otherwise, what are you really doing? So this is what a lot of people uh, get into when they're first starting out with DevOps is they go straight to this automation, which is only part of it. And you'll notice that this is the fourth session um, that we're talking about is this CICD stuff. Right, so it, there's a lot of important stuff with DevOps, but this is obviously one of the one of the steps that we need to get everything working. So let's talk about CI/CD just to level set what they actually mean. CI is continuous integration, and we've looked at some of that already. Uh, continuous a CD can be continuous delivery or continuous deployment, depending on how you feel about it or what you're talking about. So let's talk about what each of those means. CI or continuous integration is essentially making sure that my code works with other people's code. Yeah, so when I make a change and commit that to the repository, it uh, it builds alongside everybody else's changes. Our tests pass and everything looks good as far as the code is concerned. That's what continuous integration is about. Continuous delivery is taking that a little step further and making sure that we actually have a deployable thing at the end. So not just does our code compile, but does it compile and what is the thing that we can deploy at the end of it? So this could be an artifact or a bunch of artifacts or ideally even some scripts to um, establish the, the uh, infrastructure that we need, all of that kind of stuff. The idea though is at the end of that process, you have a thing that you can deploy when you want to deploy it. Now continuous de deployment takes that, that tiny little step further and actually deploys. Now, where people get hung up a lot of the time is they think continuous deployment means that they have to push it to production continuously. And that's a pretty scary concept, right? Every single, every single change that I make, is that just going to go automatically to production? And yes, that's scary. I, I've written my fair share of code that I don't think should go to production. But I don't think it's important that, or as important, that it, it's continuously delivered or continuously deployed to a production environment. Instead, I think it's important that you continuously deploy somewhere, right? Production may not be your continuous goal. You should automatically deploy to, uh, to production. So no clicking and dragging and right-click publish manually from somebody's machine. Do it automatically, but don't do it continuously necessarily. It's a good idea to deploy to a test site or something like that and then promote to production. And we're going to be looking at some of the techniques around that too. So tooling. What we've looked at so far and we're going to continue to look at is GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions is an awesome automation tool. It's not just for CI/CD; it can do a ton of things, but CI/CD is one of the uh, one of the key things that it can do really, really well. So we can automate a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to automate CI/CD in this case, including continuous delivery as well as the continuous deployment part. So. GitHub Actions, uh, if you have a look at how many actions there are, there are a huge number of actions. Just looking at the number of actions there are specifically for Azure, there's, I last time I checked, 116 different actions, and about 36 of them, I think, were, were written by Microsoft, by the Azure teams. So there's a lot of things you can do in Actions using supported uh, actions that have been written by Microsoft. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. I think. There's uh, in the eight or 9,000 different actions that are available across the board as well. So a huge number of things you can do with GitHub Actions. So I mentioned that we want to build our application and we want to deploy it to Azure, but 
we might not want to deploy every single change to Azure. So it's important that we protect production. And this is what uh, is going to get people over that hump of thinking, well, I, I don't want to put everything that I do into production. If we can protect that production environment and only promote our code when we want to, that's a really great way of handling things. So not every change to production. So let's uh, just visualize a bit of a trunk-based deployment, uh, sorry, trunk-based delivery or um, programming methodology that the Tailwind Traders is using. And it's really important to acknowledge this is just one way of handling your code. Um, it's a way that I quite enjoy or I quite like working, a way that I like quite, quite like working in. Can't talk today. Um, but it's, it's only one way. So we have our main branch, our main trunk of our code, and then all of the work that we do is done in short-lived feature branches. So rather than everybody just committing directly to our main branch, we branch away, we do some work, and then we merge that back into our main branch. Right? When we want to deploy, we'll break off a release branch. And this is really just for posterity. It's not a, we're going to deploy this once we make some changes. There should be no commits into that release branch using this, this methodology. All the changes happen in these short-lived uh, feature branches. So that's that's good. Uh, developers don't commit into these. We get this, you know, these release branches that can always talk about what went into production at what time. One of the other things you can do here, though, is if you use this pull request method where you are doing uh, short-lived feature branches and then doing pull requests back into your main branch, is you can have GitHub Actions build and even deploy your uh, changes into a pull request location or into a specific location for that pull request which means that before it gets into your main branch, so you're protecting your main branch, but you're protecting what's going to go into production, you're actually deploying this to an environment where you can test it out. You can click around, you can make sure it's all right. And then when you commit that change, you end up with that going back into your um, main branch and you can do another build and deployment and deploy that out to production if you want to as well. But this is still a little bit close to deploying every single thing we want into production. And there are scenarios where um, it might take you a little while to merge that pull request and your main branch has changed. So that pull request build and deployment works fine. But in the three days since you, you, since you did that, my, uh, the main branch has changed. And so this separate merge won't really work. So we want to check those ones as well. So what we can do is we can take that other process that we did before and when we promote to a release or when we say, okay, this is going to go to production, then we can actually deploy to our production environment. Everything before that is test environments, staging environments. So that's one way of protecting things. A really cool way of doing this uh, is chat ops. And there are lots of different ways you can do it, but let's uh, talk about chat ops. And this is uh, a term that's been used basically for using your communication hub, in our case, Teams, to manage uh, the workflow of you know, deploying your application out. So to do this, we're going to use app service deployment slots. So you can think of deployment slots as kind of a shadow version of your application, like a, a, a separate version of your production application, but just kind of lives in roughly the same place. It doesn't need to get any production traffic. It allows you to kind of test the application before pushing it out to production, which is really handy. And once you're ready, you can start rolling it out gradually, or you can just swap the production and, and whichever other slot you're using. Makes it really, really easy and quick to deploy uh, to a staging site and then production. And we're also going to use Microsoft Teams because it's our hub for team collaboration, as we've seen. Um, it has a lot of integration points. There's webhooks and connectors. Uh, adaptive cards means that it's not just text. You can do these nice little cards, which we'll see. And so we're going to use that as our kind of chat location as well. So here's our workflow. Here's what we're going to end up with. We're going to end up with a scenario where um, when we merge into our main branch in GitHub, uh, we'll, that GitHub action will deploy to our staging slot. We will also, in that GitHub action, notify teams to say, hey, there's a new deployment to our staging slot. You might want to check it out. When we look at that and decide to promote it, then we're going to talk from Teams into App Service to say, OK, let's swap that staging and production slot. We could do heaps more. We could go back into GitHub. We could comment on that release. We could uh, tag a release. We could do all sorts of stuff. But this is kind of our scenario that we're going to do. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the Tailwind Trader site. We're going to show you how to do it when we're automatically deploying to production. And then we're going to move forward a little bit into this chat ops scenario. So. 
Here's our website. The first thing we want to do is change this recommended text to recommended categories, right? Um, the changes don't really matter too much. You know, it's it's a pretty basic thing, but it demonstrates the process. So here's the change. We've already made it um, and we've committed that change, but our build doesn't do anything yet. Our workflow just builds our application and tests it. We don't have anything beyond the CI part. So here it is at the moment. We are uh, triggering this every single time we commit to our main branch. Uh, it's .NET Core, so we're running on Ubuntu, um, and then we're doing a .NET build and a .NET test. So what we want to do is we want to actually deploy it. But what we get when we actually run this is nothing. You know, It builds, it tests. We can say, great, it's ready to go. But we don't have a continuous delivery scenario. There's nothing here that we can deploy. So we want to add that process, and then we want to deploy it. So let's add a couple of actions. Uh, the first one we're going to add is our .NET Publish. Um, so this one will basically package it up into a, um, into a file or into a folder, and it will um, give us something that we can deploy later on. And then our next action is actually an Azure Web Apps Deploy action, and it's going to deploy to our production site. Now, we're using a secret here. Um, I'm not going to go into that at the moment, um, but feel free to hit me up with questions if you have them. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm actually going to upload the artifacts, the thing that we've produced, to GitHub Actions. So what that means is when I finish my workflow run, I'm going to have that artifact that I deployed to Azure just in case something goes wrong or I want to examine what's in that package. This is kind of, if I did this without the deployment part, that would be the continuous delivery. This is the thing that I'm going to deploy. Now, obviously, we want the infrastructure included and all that kind of stuff, but this is a pretty basic example. So. Let's commit this. We'll push it to our um, main branch, and we're working on our main branch at the moment. Remember, this is the kind of starting point of the continuous delivery to production. And if we jump over to um, our GitHub Actions over here, we can see that that's triggered a new build. So um, right here, if we click on Build, we can see all the logs that are going on. We'll, we'll let that go, and we'll talk about a couple of other things. I uploaded that artifact, the thing that I wanted to deploy um, straight to GitHub Actions, but I might want to use something like GitHub Packages to keep uh, packages around that are versioned and accessible outside um, GitHub Actions as well. Or maybe I wanted to use somebody else's action to upload that to a release if I'm using releases in GitHub as well. There's a lot of different options. Um, I could use a ton of different ways of doing this. So this was just a couple of examples of other ways I could do it. We're also deploying to Azure Web Apps, and I mentioned, so when, when we recorded this video, there were only 74 um, results, but there are 116 now, um, and a lot of them supported by Azure. So it's not just Azure App Service. There's, you can see uh, Kubernetes. We can actually talk to Azure Pipelines if we want. There's a ton of stuff we can do. Azure Machine Learning is even in there. And we get a lot of documentation, obviously, about how those work. But even better, we get these starter templates. So these are super handy for working out not just what those individual individual actions do, but how they work in context. So there's all these starter templates that take us through deploying a web app, including the setup and the building and things like that. All right, let's fast forward through this uh, workflow because you don't need to see that running. We're going to actually deploy to our website. OK, there we go. And if we go back to our production website, oh, sorry, you can see that uh, it's completed here. We've deployed top right here. In our artifacts, there's our artifact that we uploaded, um, 443 meg, which is pretty big. Um, but we can download that if we want. And if we refresh our production environment, we can see, sure enough, recommended should change to recommended categories, which is great. So again, we probably don't want every change to automatically go straight through to production. So let's use chat ops and control that a little bit more. Right. So. Uh, the next change I'm going to make, free shipping up here. Free is a bit expensive these days, so let's make it cheap shipping. Um, shipping is a bit of a problem at the moment. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make this change on a branch. So you can see there's the change we've made. Um, and if you look down bottom left here, you can see in VS Code I'm actually using a branch. So we're going to use this pull request process. Um, and so when we commit that change and push it, which I've already done, it's actually going to um, do a couple of things. It'll do that build and it'll deploy, but it won't be deploying to our production site. It'll be deploying to a, uh, it'll be doing a pull request and there's a connector that you can use inside Teams which notifies you of any pull request in your repository. You can get to that by going to connectors here and then 
I'm using GitHub Enterprise, so that's the connector, but there's also GitHub if you're not using Enterprise, does pretty much the same thing. And that will notify me and even give me like a deep link to that pull request. So I can click on that pull request and get that deep link into um, what's there. I can see what's changed and all sorts of stuff. The other thing it gives me, or the other thing that happens uh, is I get this check. So this check was a GitHub action that ran when there was a new pull request. And I can drill into that and see what it's done. It's done that build and all that kind of stuff. It's deployed to our website. But in this case, it's deployed to a pull request website, not to a production website. Now, because this is a demo, I've just got a single pull request website. You'd probably want to use context-specific variables to make sure each pull request wasn't overriding the previous ones. But there's our PR one. If we refresh, we can see that that change has gone in. So that's saying cheap shipping, which is, which is great. Um, but our production environment hasn't changed. All right. So let's, sorry, we'll just go back to the teams. Um, we'll jump into that. Uh, change that pull request and merge that. So this is a merge back into my main branch and that will kick off another action, another GitHub action. So this is an action that runs when we commit to our main branch, which is what this merge did. And you can see there's the, that merge pull request. We'll drill into that and um, let's drill into the logs as well. And we can fast forward this a little bit. Um, we don't need to watch this run. Um, cool. And we're doing all the same things. We're doing a build, test, publish, deploying to a website. Um, and you can see there we're deploying to a website, but we're also using some of these integrations to call back into Microsoft Teams. So if we jump to Teams, we can see we've got a chat ops channel, which has given us a custom card that we wrote with all sorts of details about a deployment to our staging environment. So we deployed to a staging slot. Again, we've set it up so we get a deep link into the change itself so we can see what's actually going out into staging, um, which is pretty cool. And we get these two buttons. One is just a link to our staging site. So this is a staging slot in Azure App Service and we can see cheap shipping. But again, we haven't deployed to production. Production, if we refresh it, still says cheap shipping, which is, uh, oh, sorry, still says free shipping. So we haven't pushed to production. We're protecting our production environment. To actually swap them, we could do that in the Azure portal, but of course we're using chat ops. So let's go back to Teams. And there's one more button that we added to our card, our adaptive card called promote to production. Now it is going to talk in this case via an Azure function to Azure app service and promote that to production and refresh that card so we can see when it was deployed to staging and when it was promoted. And then we can click on our production site. Uh, it's cached, so we'll need to uh, do a refresh. And you can see that that's promoted, that swapped the slot, and we can see it's cheap shipping in production. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, I want to stress as well, this final demo, we wrote a lot of that stuff, or I wrote a lot of that stuff with Teams for that integration story. Um, but this is just one way of doing it. And it's worth noting as well that um, GitHub Actions can do a lot of this stuff too. You can promote um, and protect environments inside Actions too. So quick summary. What we saw, we added continuous delivery and continuous deployment to our pipeline. I think it's really important to continuously deploy somewhere, even if it's not production. Um, and then chat ops is a great way of protecting our production environment. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, there was a lot there. If we've got time for Q&A, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'll stick around and I'll answer some questions in the uh, chat as well. So thanks for your time.